What's up, Divine Moon Goddess? Bam, bam. It's your Divine Moon Goddess coming at you with a little bit of motherfucking tarot. All right, Sagittarius in the building. Sorry if you guys hear a TV in the background because, you know, kiddos is home. Hey, it is it's break. It's break. All right, so I'm going to be doing something a little bit different for, for you guys. If you guys have noticed, um, it says 2022 predictions. So we're going to be looking at the year of 2022 for my Sagittarius. Now, remember that this is a collective energy that we're looking at, okay? So it may or may not come true because you have the ability to change this. None of this shit is set in stone, all right? But... Um, just know that, yes, yeah, some of it could be very well predicted because I do see energy that is coming. Now, I'm going to do it a little bit differently, and we're going to talk about some houses, and we're going to I'm going to talk through it as we go because if I sit here and try to explain it, it just doesn't make sense. So we're going to do, do it while we're going through the reading, okay? I'm going to do it in a way where I look at your houses, where it looks at your uh, place it's really looking at your life in a whole nother way, basically. Okay. So we'll just keep it there. Let's keep it fucking simple. Right. <laughs> so first card out is a uh, first house, which is the five of swords in the reverse. Now first house is ruled by Aries. Now I want to tell you these houses in your personal chart will actually line up a little bit different. Um, but when we're looking at the traditional sense of what it is, especially on a collective basis, we're going to look at what the house is, are and who runs it right so aries is the first house now your ascendant sign actually would run this a little bit more or rule this should i say more because your ascendant sign is kind of what uh it flourishes you but for this purpose of video we will stick to aries um being that house time frame is uh end of march early april second house is taurus the house of taurus and we have the ten of wands in the reverse now taurus uh is uh, end of April, early May. Um, third house. Now, first house is self. Second house is possessions. Third house, communication, ruled by Gemini. You got the six of pentacles in the reverse, okay? Fourth house is ruled by cancer. Cancer energy in the fourth house, where we actually have the chariot card in the house, the fourth house, which is this family, home, uh, nurturing, mothering connections, okay? Um, fifth house is ruled by leo it's the house of fun and pleasure not sex it's fun and pleasure okay spotlight shit like that and procreation you have the seven of cups uh sixth house is ruled by virgo you have the four of cups here um that's your routine in your health uh seventh uh house is partnerships that is your partnership house okay so any connections partners are going to come out in here not that they can't come out in here, but this is primarily what that house is for. It's ruled by Libra. Eighth house is ruled by Scorpio. Um, this is the house of death, rebirth, and transformation and sex, okay? Ninth house is Sagittarius, your house, ruled by um, philosophy. It's the house of knowledge, all right? Uh, tenth house is Capricorn. Um, that is all about your social status, your career, what you're known for. We have the um, Eight of Cups. This one's the Five of Cups. And we have the Nine of Swords. We have a lot of Cups and Swords, actually. Um, Eleventh House, which is ruled by Aquarius, which is the Two of Swords. And the Twelfth House, which is the Three of Swords in the Twelfth House. And um, overall energy of the year is the Tower in the Reverse. So my Sagis, I feel like you've been hit really hard with the Tower um, that is shaking up your life and your life now will never be the same. Okay. And so this is just really moving through the emotions of 2022. Um, there's a lot of sadness. There's a lot of walking away. There's a lot of letting shit go. There's a lot of change based on this tower that has influenced your life. Okay. So whatever this is, and we will talk that about that a little bit more has really set up your life to move in a certain way. Okay. So let's get it cracking. So we're going to start with the first house. The first house, like I said, is about you. It's a, it's the house of self. Um, it's the mask that we wear. It's our persona. It's our personality. Um, it is who we're known for. It's the first impression. Now, I like that the five of swords is in the reverse because you were thinking everybody was against you. Nobody had your back. And now something has changed. You're like, wait a minute. 
I had this all wrong. Everybody's not against me. I'm not all alone. You know, I'm not um, f having a fight with everyone. Everyone's not my enemy. So Sag, something is changing when it comes to your to you in that aspect. Yeah, so you have a lot of concerns. So I feel like you're just, the concerns that you've had is about self now. Now you're more concerned about people around you. Now you're not taking things so, um, so uh, t like towards you in, in this certain way. Let me get another card about that. What, what else is going on when it comes to the first house? Now remember first house is, is uh, Aries and that is also around March and uh, April occupation. So a lot of concerns work, and this is detailed work. This is what you're good. This is what you're known for. Um, this is like really perfecting your craft kind of energy. So I feel like um, when it comes to your energy, as far as self goes, you're really just getting into what is it that I could do to produce money? What's my occup occupation? How can I put time and effort into what I'm doing? Because there's a lot of concerns around what you're doing as far as work and livelihood, okay? But I do feel like you're moving away from from your ego. Now, second house is about our possessions, what we own, our debt, our, our money, um, you know, everything like that when it comes to our what how we own our feelings, our creature comforts, what do we value? Um, that is the second house ruled by Taurus. And so we have the 10 of wands in the reverse. So there's something about making money or generating money that's getting easier for you in 2022. It feels like you were just doing shit the hard way, basically, Sag. And the spirit's like, no, we kept telling you. <laughs> so uh, Sagittarius, I feel like in the year of 2022, you are actually going to be getting noticed. You're going to be getting high honors. Um, I do feel like you're going to be getting noticed in the, in to the point of where it transfers into your possessions, of what you own. You're being noticed on some extent when it comes to the house of Taurus, okay? Mature man. Okay, so for some of you, there's like a bond. Uh, this could be a person coming in, but this also could be a father figure um, that's coming into your life or that you're really bonding with. Um, there's a value. There's something about the value of this person enhancing, or maybe you're just seeing your father in a different life, light when it comes to this year coming up. But I do feel like there's a strengthening and really um, like a level up when it comes to this energy. There's a maturing also happening when it comes to this energy. Somebody's maturing in their um, status and in their station. And it has to do with a lot of work that they've put in, a lot of time and effort that they've put in. It definitely could be you, Sag, okay? So third house we're looking at is ruled by Gemini. This is the house of communication. Now, remember, this is also nonverbal communication. This is how we, you know, this is how we articulate our intellect. Um, it's also um, how we project technology also falls in this house. Um, the other part about this house is it's the house of twins, divine union. So there's some imbalance when it comes to your third house. And I feel like either you're not communicating effectively or whoever you're with is not communicating effectively. We're not getting that equal kind of give and take when it comes to um, that house, okay? Um, you got change. A lot of changes going on. Um, when it comes to this, and I feel like you could just be changing the way that you communicate. You could be like, you know what? I've done this long time communicating in this particular way. Maybe now I need to change the way that I do things. And I do feel like a lot of my Sages, you guys have gone through something huge that is changing the way you deal with everybody. It's how you talk, how you speak, how you walk, how you put time and effort in. Something is changing you to you're just like, no, I, I got to change. I got to change. So 2022 is huge and drastic change for my Sagis. Okay. When we look at the fourth house, when it comes to cancer, this is also the house of the mother. Definitely some huge movement and changes when it comes to this, your home. You could be moving. You could be relocating. You could be buying a car. Um, but I do feel like there's some changes, definitely uh, lots of changes of home front, like actually relocation also. Um, now, you do have the imprisonment card coming out in the wealthy man. So just make sure that we're not embezzling. <laughs> make sure, Sag, that we're not embezzling nothing. Some of you guys could feel very stuck or tied to a particular energy that you just feel like you can't get away from, no matter how much you try to get away from this person. I will tell you, the wealthy man, though, has money. So 
You know, there's just something about that where I'm going to pull another card on the, the imprisonment because I just don't like, uh, I don't want to say like, Sag, you, you might be going to jail. Um, I don't like to predict stuff like that. I know it can happen, but I don't like to put that kind of energy out in the air. So what's the imprisonment card? Oh, snap. What's the imprisonment card? Page of Cups. So I feel like it's definitely how we're communicating. I feel like we need to learn how to communicate with passion. I think we need to learn. Somebody might not know how to communicate. Somebody might be stuck. Maybe they want to say certain things to Sag or they want to communicate in a certain way. Sorry about the kiddos in the back. Yeah, there's a lot of hurt and pain when it comes to this energy. When it comes to this energy, I just feel like it, there's a huge, huge lesson in this house with cancer. All right. I do feel like that you were meant to know each other. And this, yeah, this man may come off with a lot of money or some type of something that's wealthy to you. I'm going to say wealthy to you because it doesn't have to be money. It could be something else. But what I'm seeing, Sag, is the lack of love between you and this person. And I feel like they've hurt you already. This is the type of person who likes to get what they want and step on others. So be very careful with that, Sag. Okay. Um, when it comes to the fifth house is the house of pleasure ruled by Leo energy. Um, this is the house of, of fun and pleasure, not sex. This is pleasure. So this is what makes you happy. Your hobbies, uh, artistry, singing, dancing all fall into this house. Um, also romance falls into this house. Procreation falls into this house. Now seven of cups is here. Cause I think, uh, some of you Sages are delusional right now of what's truly making you happy or how you can gain some happiness in life. Okay. So with the set of cups, there's a lot of choices. Some of you might just have a lot of choices in love. You're like, no, oh, I'm dating. I just got all these choices. I don't really know who to date. I got, you know, pickings from everyone, you know, who knows that. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of confusion when it comes to this house on how, how do I have fun? How do I, you know, move forward? Now, see, we do have the privileged lady who is the partner. I'm going to tell you guys is partner of the wealthy man. Okay. By the, the privileged lady in no matter who you are, if you're masculine or feminine, the man is the one in this particular card deck that has the money. She, her status is elevated due to him. Okay. So there's something about that. All right. I feel like you got to be very honest with yourself. Do not have rose colored glasses on where you're at in this relationship or this partnership, Sag. Okay. And you do have, there's just something about you staying in a fantasy. You're in a fantasy land when it comes to this particular situation. Oh, I see why. <laughs> I see why, Sag. You got the lover's card. So definitely twin flame divine uh, union. So, you know, I feel like don't let your emotions confuse what you know to be true, Sagittarius, okay? I feel like you and this person um, have a lot of, you know, to go, you and this person have a lot of energy and you've been through a lot, but I'm telling you, I feel like there's no really getting around this person. This person is meant to be in your path, okay? Just this person is used to doing things, maybe not ethical ways of doing things, um, to get where they're at, but there's a reason they are where they're at. Okay. When we're looking at the sixth house, this is also probably someone you're meant to have a child with also for some of you, not everyone, because some of you guys will get in those comments. And if you got a, your tubes tied, you fucking got them twisted and burnt and clipped and fucking removed, then that's not for you. It's for the people who actually want to have kids. Okay. Don't make these fucking messages yours. <laughs> Now we're talking about the sixth house, which is ruled by Virgo. All right. So in this house, um, this is your health and your routine. Spirit is telling your ass to meditate, Sagittarius. You need to meditate, Sagittarius. How many times we got to tell you to meditate, Sagittarius? Okay. So Spirit is telling you to get into meditation. Start connecting within. Get control of your emotions. All right. A, um, change the, your diet. Get to your routine. Clean your house organize your shit. Some of you guys need to just fucking organize your shit. I'm doing that right now <laughs> as we speak. <laughs> organize your shit. Some of you guys are going to be moving too. I do see relocation for some of my Sages. Um, some of you guys are relocating to another home, condo, apartment. Um, I do feel that very strongly for my Sagittarius. Okay. Um, for a seventh house, which is our house of partners, partnerships, 
Um, also legalities, any law contracts stuff. I do feel like you're trying to make a decision. I feel like you're being pulled in two different directions. For some of you, it could be just two different people. Some of you, it could just be, do I want this person or not this person? You know, some of you could just be choosing, do, do I stay single or do I make this person my partner? Okay. Um, so yeah, see, I feel like for some of you, you're dealing with the wrong person and you, you know, sometimes that happens. When we have the twin flame, we'll have, you know, other people who kind of come in and then we have, um, sometimes it's just a false person. Yeah. Some of you guys just need to end something with someone who is just not your person. Um, let me see if I can get another card on that so we can kind of see for my Sagis, who might that be? Cause for some of you, this is about really just letting go. Uh, I'm not predicting deaths with the coffin card. I just don't like to do that. So if someone dies, you know, in the month of October, September, it has nothing to do with my predictions, okay? Um, I don't like to even say stuff like that because I just feel like if it happens, it happens. It's not because I predicted it. Um, so what's this? King of Wands. So for some of you, you guys are making a decision on a person that is just not your person. This person comes and goes. This person can be very aggressive. Um, this person could just be very dominant. Um, this person could be very high strung. Um, this person is a cheater, though. I will tell you, for those of you who are dealing with whoever this King of Wands is, this person is a cheater. This must end in the year 2022. I feel like the biggest thing is you guys got somebody coming in who is your person, but some of you are very chained to someone who is not meant to be in your life in 2022. So just know that, you know, this is what's going to be happening. The spirit is trying to push you to where you need to go. Some of you guys need to let that go. Some of you guys need to end a relationship that you're in and move to where spirit is pushing you. Okay. Um, uh, eighth house. So eighth house is ruled by Scorpio. This is seventh house is ruled by Libra. Um, if this is uh, eighth house ruled by Scorpio. So this is about sex, death, and rebirth. It is intense sexual encounters, but it all, it's also about their transformation. A lot of worry in this house. Um, you know, this is the house of the unknown. This is the house of the mystics. This is the house of, unfortunately, death. So there's a lot of worry. I don't know if you're worrying about death in life and just worried, you know, when shit happens in our life, especially whatever the tower was, you know, sometimes we're very worried about the people around us and we're, we get very scared and we get very scared of death and we get very scared of life. So there's a lot of worry um, in, when it comes to your life here. Yeah, see, you're just waiting. There's a lot of concerns, a lot of waiting, 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 waiting. You're just kind of sitting in this energy, waiting, waiting, waiting. So just know that, you know, especially when it comes to Scorpio season, um, try to snap out of that um, when, it, you know, before that season, try to release what you can't change, Sag. If you know it's something you can't change, just kind of let it go. There's no sense of driving yourself crazy when you know that there's nothing else you can do in a particular situation, okay? Um when we're looking at the ninth house, which is your house, Sagittarius, um, this is the house of everything that we know. There's a lot of sadness here. And I think in 2022, you're going to be, you're going to be very tested on your life, what you know to be true. Um, you're going to get tested on what you felt you believed in. Um, there's going to be a lot of things that you're like, man, I should have did this. I should have did that. There's a lot of, of shoulda, coulda, woulda when it comes to higher knowledge, esoteric knowledge, spiritual knowledge, whatever knowledge it is, um, it's the house of philosophy. So I feel like there's just a lot of this, you know, going back of, man, I should have did this and I should have that, but get out of that energy, Sag. You still have time. Yeah. See, it's a lot of shitty energy because you're feeling like you're so lacking. Let me tell you, Sag, you cannot manifest in a place of lack. So get out of that. Destroy this shit. Let it go. Let go what you cannot control because it just doesn't make any sense to hold on to that shit anymore. Okay. Now, when we look at the 10th house, this is the house of our career, the house of what we're known for. There's something changing in your 10th house, your career. Um, this is the eight of cups. This is about walking away from things that don't serve you, walking away from, you know, careers or money that just aren't it for you. Um, for those of you who are in the spell work, witch community, you could be walking away from that. You know, there's this energy of just this, I'm not into this shit no more. Like, fuck the shit, you know? It's just kind of like, I'm not I'm not doing this shit no more. Um, for some of you, you could be walking into it. You know, that could be the change. Um, 
All right. Some of you guys could be walking away from a marriage. Um, I feel like there's a partner here that you could be leaving. You could be already married to this person or in a long-term partnership, but I feel a sense of actually walking away from this person. Now, I know we're looking at the 10th house, which is career and your social status. So somewhere your social status could be where you're with someone that you actually leave this person. So your social status changes from in a relationship to single um, in the, um, in this coming year. Now, remember Capricorn season actually starts in January. So for the year 2022, that actually starts in January. So we could possibly see this in our Sag as being single when it comes to January. Um, when we're looking at Aquarius season, um, Aquarius season, which this is Aquarius uh, energy. This is 11th house, which is the house of friends. And I do feel like, Sad, you got a lot of really good friends around you, ones that can help you make decisions, ones that are loyal, ones that do have your back and can help you level out. I feel like there's a lot of choices and decisions for you this year, really taking out people who no longer deserve to be in your life, but also, um, also allowing the people who do have your back in. Um, lots of messages from friends coming in, I feel like. Um, I just feel like overall, it's a lot of messages. It's a lot of concern. It's a lot of love pouring in when it comes to this energy. And, you know, this is in uh, January. What is Aquarius season? Aquarius season is January to February. Yeah, and Capricorn is December to January. Yeah. So that's coming up pretty soon. You can have a lot of messages from people, you know, just kind of showing love, sending love to you, um, Sag, okay? Now, unfortunately, in the 12th house, <clears throat> which is the house of Pisces, um, there's a lot of hurt and there's a lot of pain, Sag. So I don't know if this is like just you're getting broken hearted by someone or someone is leaving you because, again, someone is leaving here. This could be the separation of a, of a partnership. I think someone could have died, you know, I don't want to say that, but it could, because we also have the tower here. So someone could have died. They could really be leaving this pain in what, it's what people don't see. Because the house of Pisces is all about the subconscious. It's what people don't see. It's what you hide from others. And so there's a lot of heartbreak and pain that's surfacing in this particular area. Um, and so I just want you to know, try to mend this and heal this as best you can. If it is a person who has left you or is gone, um, all you can do is allow yourself to release, grieve, go through the emotion, Sag, and that's really all you can do. You can't do anything else with that. Um, let's see what's going out. Yeah, I feel like you, you feel like you've been robbed. I feel like you feel like you've been robbed, Sag. So this is the energy of just Somebody is stolen your heart or someone is stolen your your life or, you know, it's just something very harsh going on and you feel very robbed and cheated in life. And this is very much in your uh, subconscious um, energy. Okay. Let's see what this tower overall, like I said, the tower um, has is sparked you to make some moves. So this is you making moves on your life. This is you moving forward. I do want to get a couple more cards on some of these real quick before we um go to the next piece so um 10th house marriage and the walking away what is that 10th house marriage walking away what is that 10th house marriage walking away what is that 10th house marriage walking away yeah, four of wands in the reverse. That's a separation. Knight of swords. That's a separation. It's someone who doesn't know how to communicate or they're very harsh with their words. Um, walking away from that energy. What are these messages in the 11th house? I feel like it's just from friends, but what is, um, yeah, there's a lot of heartbreak and pain. Um, I just feel like you're making a decision to walk away from someone either you truly loved or that it's just, there's this energy of just like letting go. And even though there's still messages between you and this person, there's a huge separation with you and this person. Um, and what's this in the 12th house? What is this in the 12th house? Yeah, you're feeling very defeated in this energy, um, feeling very defeated when it comes to this, this loss. So very harsh energy for my Sagis. 
um, coming into 2022, I just want you to take a moment and just really look at what's going on in your life, process all the any deaths that have happened, process how you're looking at things, um, allow yourself to understand that you can't control everything and just let go what you can't control. Focus on making your lives happy and healthy every day, okay? So I'm going to go through the signs and see if you're dealing with a particular sign and give you an added message, all right? So if you are dealing with an Aries, okay, I feel like um, this is a lot of work, but I and I feel like there's a lot of concerns, but I feel like, you know, sometimes it's just that it takes the time and the effort to put into a situation. And particularly this Aries, there's a lot of, you got to put in a lot of work, okay? Um, if you're dealing with the Taurus, I feel like the Taurus is maturing in this situation. And I do feel like this could level up to another um, kind of, it could level up to something else. I feel like this person has matured. Okay, they have put some time and effort into themselves. I feel like this person might have even went to school, got some, you know, kind of high honors or whatever. And now this person is coming back with some, you know, it's something to show for what they've done. Um, if you're dealing with the Gemini, I feel like this could be a change. I do feel like this could be actually moving away or breaking away, breaking up from each other. I don't feel like it's coming together. I feel like it's the opposite separation. If you're dealing with the cancer, this is a lot of craziness with the cancer. I feel like, you know, I feel like this is, um, I feel like this is hard. This is back and forth with the cancer in 2022. I feel like finally you realize that this person is a, I want my kick and ate it. No, I want my cake and eat it too kind of person. Um, I feel like this is someone who has hurt you before. Um, but remember, it's all about you if you allow this person to hurt you again. There is a big, huge karmic lesson when it comes to this cancer. So just remember that, yeah, this person got some money, but to what extent, okay? So cancer energy. I feel like spirit is trying to move you away from this person, but that is up to you, Sage. If you're dealing with a Leo, I do feel like the Leo is a strong uh, partner. This could be divine union or this could be um, twin flame. I do feel like this is uh, someone that, you know, you could level up with. Just be very honest with yourself about where you are with this situation. Don't see it more than what it is and don't down it less than what it is. I feel like you have a very strong connection with someone, but you could be downing it because you're, you're, you're telling yourself it's not more, or you're telling yourself, oh, I'm just crazy. No, nope, you're not crazy. You really feel it. Um, if you're dealing with the Virgo, I feel like there's a deep connection with this Virgo. And I do feel like this is what I wanted to, to gain some cards on, huh? I think I did. I wanted to see what was going on with this. Um, Cause I feel like um, this house is here and that's about building a foundation. So I feel like you and the Virgo could actually build a foundation together. I feel like you can actually um, connect. Um, there's something about connecting emotionally. Seven of Cups, but no. Don't see more into what you and the Virgo have. I think you guys have a very deep connection, but I don't think it's going to go nowhere. I think there's been too much maybe chaos or fighting with the Virgo. Um, I feel like there's just been a lot of back and forth. So I feel like this is actually just... Kind of going your separate ways and putting the time and effort into you. I just see there's too much. Um, I feel like there's too much talking about it, but not being about it kind of energy. Oops. Okay, if that makes sense. Um, if you're dealing with a Libra, if you're dealing with a Libra, this uh, -uh this is not your person. This needs to end. If you're dealing with a Libra, this person is a very um. This is someone who's who's very, uh, this person cheats, okay? So this needs to end. Spirit has been telling you this, and I feel like you already know this. I won't say every Sag that's dealing with a Libra, but those of you who that makes sense, you already know. Spirit's not telling you nothing you don't know. You already know that person's a cheater. If you're dealing with the Scorpio, I feel like there's a sense of worried and waiting. Um, I feel like someone is worried and waiting over you um Sagittarius so there's just this energy like are we going to come together are we going to be together like is this person going to be with me but for some reason it's just like there's no, I don't feel like there's any communication between you two 
Um, if you're dealing with another Sagittarius, I feel like this is a loss. Um, I feel like there's a lot of remorse and regret in this situation, but not going anywhere. Okay. If you're dealing with a Capricorn, I do feel like you or the other person is going to be walking away. I do feel like this was a solidified uh, union because we have the home and the marriage card, but I feel like we're going to be walking away. There's something about it, just communication isn't there, or maybe the connection just isn't there. So um, I don't feel like you and the Capricorn are going to be sticking it out very much longer. Um, when it comes to the Aquarius, I feel like there's a lot of messages. I feel like this is you and a person that had... Um, a very strong connection, although I don't see you and this person getting back together. I just feel like there's a lot of heartfelt messages between you and the Aquarius, okay? There could be some distance between you two also. Um, if you're dealing with the Pisces, unfortunately, I feel like either someone you feel has stolen this person away or this person has broken your heart. Um, there's a lot of pain and ache when it comes to the Pisces. Um, it just feels very brokenhearted. Um, six of wands in reverse is there's this defeat in the energy. Um, so you just feel very defeated and there's just like nothing you can do about it. It's like um, you've been robbed, basically, is how I feel very strongly. So overall energy for the year, remember, it's all about journeys. It's all about moving forward and going ahead and getting to the next space. Whatever this tower was for you, Sag, it's put you on a path. And so this is going to spark your path to transform your life more than what you've ever done before. And it's going to be hard and it's going to be trying, but just know that you can make it through. Okay. You can make it through. Just find the people who love you and cherish you and support you. So that's what I got for my lovely, lovely Saggies. I hope that this helps and I hope it gives you some clarity and insight. Um, um, like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel as always. And remember, in the month of December, um, you can book me for an in-depth reading, get 30% off using Santa's Helper 333 at checkout, or all my classes are over 50% off if you book them in the month of December. So um, all that information is in the description. Make sure that you are watching the morning show uh, Monday through Fridays at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on this channel. And as always, I'm sending you love and light, light and love. Until next time, bye.